I realize my videos have gotten a bit long in the format lately. So to try and tighten things up, I present for your consideration this diagram I made, which illustrates what I've chosen to call the HOS, or Human Operating System, version 1.0. The reason for this designation is that, so far as our modern sciences can tell, our psychology hasn't really received much updating in the last hundred millennia. Most of our holocenic firmware is still running on the old paleocenic hardware, and our sociocultural software just got its first major patch in over five centuries just under two decades ago. Now I'll be completely honest with you, I drew up this chart principally to justify my putting out an addendum to one of the oldest videos on this channel, The Human Question, which wouldn't have been enough to make a whole video on by itself. For those, likely the majority of you who haven't watched that older video, basically its point was to outline the psychological roots of nihilism. I argue that there are two fundamental instincts underpinning the totality of human thought and action, the procreative instinct, the one we all know, which compels us to survive and reproduce, and the reductive instinct, so-called because it reduces our energy expenditure to the minimum necessary to achieve a given goal or complete a certain task. In essence, it is a drive towards efficiency which leads us to doubt our every thought, to question our every action. It's the source of our imperative to ask why. It's the reason we have the ability to reason, and in fact why we even have a brain at all. The self-evident problem with this adaptation being that, when the capacity to reason is expanded to where we understand mortality, it renders any and all procreative efforts pointless, and so creates a negative feedback spiral of paradoxical entropy, which most people have neither the intellectual faculties nor the emotional fortitude to escape from. Now what does this have to do with the HOS? Well, you'll notice in the lower hindbrain section, in the parentheses below the green dot labeled instincts the word socialize, and in that lies a critical oversight on the part of my younger self. You see, I used to think that our advanced intelligence was the source of existential dread, but then I remember this quote from Eleanor Roosevelt, Great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, small minds discuss people. We've all heard that humans are social animals, but I don't think very many of us truly appreciate how deeply those roots run. Most people are not motivated by abstract concepts like truth or morality. They're motivated by other people. It's the social impact of their actions that drives the plurality of human behavior. And this is why you'll notice that people at the upper tiers of the socioeconomic pyramid seem utterly immune to existential dread. You've never seen a corporate jarhead or a politician ruminating about their place in the universe because as far as they're concerned, they are the be-all, end-all of existence. Their own wants, their own needs, their own egos are all important in their worlds. And this, I now believe, is the real source of our, as far as we know, uniquely human paradox, our need to question ourselves, to doubt, to rationalize, to justify. It is the source of not only morality, but culture also. Society is a bubble of order in the physical world, defined by walls and borders built to keep out the predators and the parasites. The idea being that, if you are on this side of the wall, you are a friend. If you're not, you're an enemy. For lack of a better term, it is a safe space where we can feel free, at least somewhat, to let our guards down. And it is the allure of this absolute certainty of friend and foe that compels us to draw and ardently defend boundaries. Morality is just the metaphysical extension of these practices, while culture is its social expression. You share my religion? Well, then I know I can trust you. You like the same movies as me? Well, then, you must have good taste. I won't waste your time or insult your intelligence by tracing out all the bugs in this program's logical code. I mention it only to punctuate why it is that any action taken within a social collective needs to be justified. We judge ourselves internally just in case we need to explain ourselves to our community. We ask, why am I doing this? Not because we want to solve some cosmic jigsaw puzzle, but because we have only so much time and energy to spend on activity, and because our tribe won't tolerate a predator or parasite in their midst. All right, well, that took a few more turns than I thought it would. So before I go too far off the rails, I think I'm going to call it for one session. You know the drill by now. Check out the links in the description, buy my books, etc., etc., leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and remember to keep your mind's gate open, but well guarded. Peace.